Hello folks, I'm Brian Manzella. As we look ahead to the Arnold Palmer Invitational held at Bay Hill, we should look back to the greatness of the King's golf swing. That's right, I said Arnold Palmer had a great golf swing, and everybody that I know that's in the know knows how great it was. He didn't win all those tournaments making 30 footers on every hole. Arnold Palmer hit the ball great for a long, long period of time. I'm gonna show you three elements of his golf swing that he used almost his entire career to make it work as well as it did. And I'm gonna show you how maybe you can incorporate them into your game for similar results. The first of Palmer's key moves was his takeaway. In the video era, let's say from the mid 80s to the early 2000s, every golf teacher was drawing some line on the shaft and having people take the club back right along that line. That kind of takeaway works for a lot of people, but it didn't work for Arnold Palmer. I'm sure he experimented with something more outside than what he did. But what Arnold did was he took the club well inside. He turned his hips fully. He let his right leg straighten pretty much fully. And doing that and keeping the club artificially out in front of him would have been a bad idea because one of the hallmarks of Palmer's swing is how he worked on top of it and then unwound to stay under it through the ball. If he'd have taken it back a little more outside with all that early turn, he couldn't have worked over it anywhere near as good. Remember, you might play better with a little more of an inside takeaway and also with the back of your left hand a little bit more down and arch with the club face a little bit less open. The second move that Palmer made that I think is awesome, very athletic, is the move he made from the top of the swing separating his thigh, his left thigh and his left hip from his torso. Let me show you how he did it. So from the top of his swing, where he had massive hip turn and massive shoulder turn and a bunch of left thigh movement, while his club was still at the top of the swing, he separated this left hip and left knee and left thigh from his torso. You'll see his club at the top of the swing and you'll see how all of this separated really creating a strong position and enough early pelvis speed that he could then, when his left arm was about parallel to the ground in the downswing, start accelerating his torso on top of that. Try a little up against a door jam position separation, and I bet you it's something you probably don't have in your swing, and you probably need a little bit more of it to hit the ball as strong as you can, especially as strong as Arnold Palmer did. The third thing that Palmer did that I think almost everybody misses, and there's some real good black and white footage of him from the up the line view, the way I'm looking at the camera right here, to show you how fully he released the club and had the club back on plane with the butt of the club sort of at the camera or at the target right here, much like Rory McIlroy does today. What everybody sees though, is Arnold Palmer's little helicopter move at the end. No, Palmer had a full release. The club went back on plane and the butt of the club did not work left in a cutoff mode. Sure, he did it when he was trying to play a cut shot, but he had that full back on plane, what we call one last point, that butt of that club pointing at the target, move in his swing before he put his little signature helicopter move on there. I promise you that if you work these three things in your golf swing, take the club back as inside as you need to to be strong and on top of it on the downswing, separate that lower body from the upper body in the transition and fully release that club back on the plane. You're gonna be thrilled with the results and you're gonna be able to hit it hard and strong just like the king. <laughs>